God, your great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Good morning, welcome here to Springfield Missionary Baptist Church. We have to welcome you here this first Sunday in May 2021. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is good to be at God's house this morning. We pray that you are safe. We pray that your family is doing well and that you're holding on to God's unchanging hand. There is a message this morning. We ask that you turn in your Bibles to the book of Luke, the book of Luke, the 22nd chapter, and looking at verses 31 and 32. Again, the book of Luke, uh, uh, chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. This is what the word of God says this morning. It said, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. 32 says, but I have prayed for thee, that thou faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Again, that's Luke, the 22nd chapter, verses 31 and 32. This morning we want to talk about uh, uh, don't let your situations get the best of you. Again, don't let your situations get the best of you. In life we find ourselves in many situations and maybe one thing and mine may be another. But all of us are dealing with some kind of situation. Therefore we want to encourage you this morning don't let your situations get the best of you. Uh, 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 my brother and sister this morning, if we find ourselves, we find ourselves in many situations. In life, we will find ourselves, if it's not one thing, it's another situation. Your situation may be one thing and mine may be another. But we all find ourselves at one time or another dealing with many situations. Uh, uh, but I'll stop by the take this morning and to encourage you this morning that don't let your situations get the best of you. Uh, so what if you're wounded? You know that the Lord is in the healing business. Again, so what that you are wounded and many are wounded, but you know that the Lord is in the healing business. So what if you're walking in darkness? Jesus is still the light of the world. You see, so what if your money looking funny? The Lord still is a provider this morning. I stopped by to tell you, don't let your situation get the best of you. You know that he's still a provider. No matter how funny your money gets, he's still, my grandmother said, will make a way out of no way. Uh, I stopped by to tell you, if you know that he's a provider, you have not let your situation get the best of you. In our text before us this morning, we find that Jesus is giving Peter a pep talk. Are y'all listening this morning as we read the scripture this morning? We find that Jesus is giving Peter a pep talk. Now stop by the chain this morning in the midst of life situation. Every now and then, you need a pep talk. Uh, he's giving Peter a glimpse of, of, of a situation that's waiting on him down the road. Are y'all listening to me? This morning, we find that Jesus is, is actually giving Peter a glimpse of a situation that has not arrived, but is down the road. I stopped by to tell somebody this morning, if you have not faced that situation wet, yet, it's one headed, you're headed to one and there's one down the road. Because, you see, Jesus wants Peter to understand, he don't want him throwing the towel when the situation comes his way. And I stopped by to tell somebody this morning, you don't have to throw in the towel just because of a situation. So Peter tells this is what Jesus tells Peter. He said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desire to have you, that he may sift you as sweet, as sweet. But I pray for thee that thy faith fail 
Allah. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. Jesus, look, look, this pep talk. Jesus tells uh, a Peter that Satan wants you. He wants to sift you as sweet. In other words, Jesus tells Peter, when trouble comes, and I stop by to tell somebody, it will come. When you face circumstances, and you shall face circumstances, when things in life fall apart, and they surely will. Jesus tells Peter, when these things happen, hold your head up, roll your shoulders back, and remember this pep talk. I stopped by to tell somebody this morning, I want you to do the same thing. Don't let your situation get the best of you. When they come, roll your shoulders back. Hold your head up. And remember this pep talk that Jesus gave Peter this morning. You know what? Don't let your situation get the best of you. Then Jesus gives a godly remedy on how to overcome your situation. Listen to me. He gave Peter a godly remedy of how to overcome his situation. The first thing Jesus revealed to Peter is a portrait of the devil's agenda. Are you listening to me? Jesus gave Peter a portrait of the devil's or Satan's agenda. I start by telling you, brother and sister, that Satan has an agenda planned out for you. It's hard, though, y'all, to get hit by a train when you know it's coming your way. Are y'all listening to me? It's hard to get hit by a train when you know the train is coming your way. Likewise, I want you to understand this morning that Jesus is giving Peter a, a preview of Satan's agenda. So he be aware when the situation comes, don't let the situation get the best of him. How Jesus paints this picture in Peter's mind about the devil's agenda. He said, Simon, Simon, the devil desires that he may sift you as sweet. I stopped by to tell somebody this morning, likewise, as Jesus had this pep talk with Peter, you need to understand that the devil desires to sift you as sweet. It's important to understand that the word desire means that the devil wants to get his hands on you. Now, this, 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 this you is plural. The Bible says he told Peter that the devil wants to get his hands on you. In other words, Jesus tells Peter, Satan wants to expose your faults, your sins, and your weaknesses for the purpose of discrediting your testimony. All, I need to pause right there. Jesus tells Peter that Satan wants to get his hands on you so he can expose your, your, your faults and your weaknesses for the purpose of discrediting your testimony. I stop by to tell somebody, it's about your testimony this morning and your belief and your trust in God and these situations that come your way. It coming to discredit your testimony. But I stop by to tell somebody this morning, don't let your situation get the best of you. In other words, in other words, Peter, he wants to sell your life and put your life into pieces. In case somebody listen this morning, I stop by to tell you, in case somebody listen this morning and you think your life is in pieces, I stop by to tell you, the Lord specializes in broken pieces. I need to say it again, the good news, if you think your life is broken in pieces, I stop by to tell somebody this morning that the Lord specializes in putting life back together. The Lord specializes in broken pieces. The Lord specializes in restless situations. The Lord specializes in putting your life back together. together. So I stop by to tell somebody this morning don't let your situation get the best of you. You see, when situations of life seem to be getting the best of you, get to the Palmer's house and give it to God. Again, when, when, when life seems like it's getting the best of you, get to the Palmer's house and give it to God. Because God is way better than handling your situation than you are. Can I tell you again? God is much better and equipped and handling our situation than we are. So don't let your situation get the best of you. 
Well, not only did Jesus give Peter a portrait of a devil's agenda, but the text also revealed that Jesus gave him the prayer of the great high priest. You see, the truth of the matter is, come a little closer. Don't tell me about I told you this. Come a little closer. The truth of the matter is, uh, 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 some people get joy out of seeing you down and out. Come a little closer. Listen, listen, listen. You see, some people around you, they get joy out of seeing you down and out. Broken and hurt. Wounded and destroyed. But the good news today is that Jesus wants to see you blessed in our spirits. Let me say it again. Jesus, he's not like those around you. He's not like your enemy. Jesus wants you to see you blessed and not stressed. Heal and not sick. Up and not down. So Jesus tells Peter, Satan wants to ship. Well, I pray that thy faith fell is not. I stopped by to tell somebody this morning, I pray that your faith don't fail you. Your trust in God don't fail you. Don't let your situation get the best of you. The Bible says that you have the faith of a mustard seed. You can say to the mountain, be moved. And I stop by to tell somebody this morning, if you got the faith of a mustard seed, you can say your situation, be moved. Notice, notice this morning, Jesus doesn't pray that Peter never have trouble. Are y'all listening to me? Don't tell your brother this is one. You see, he doesn't pray that Peter doesn't have trouble. But he prays that Peter has faith this morning. That Peter has faith this morning. In other words, Jesus knows that without faith, he knew that Peter's faith would be tested. Like I stopped by to tell somebody this morning, your faith will be tested. Situations will come your way. And he prayed for Peter even before the test came. And just like he prayed for Peter, he also will pray for you and me. You see, when the dust settled this morning, the rain dropped, the trouble stopped falling, and the floods came closing, the storm ceased. That we will have the word of God in our hand, a smile on our face, and God will get us through our situation. I stop by the day, and our testimony would be that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, I wouldn't have made it. I stop by the day of somebody this morning. Don't let the situation get the best of you. Well, not only did Jesus give Peter a portrait of the day of the gentleman. He gave in the prayer of the great high priest. You see, the text also revealed that Jesus gave him this. You see, the list of your test, trial in situations, what life throws at you. We tend to ask the Lord how much pain, why so much pain. But Betty Wright, church, she answered a question in her song, no pain, no gain. Betty Wright tells in the lyric of the song that if we want to experience gain in the morning, we have to endure the pain of the night. But I stop by the tell somebody tonight. The Bible says, if I'm weeping, may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We have to endure the pain of the night, church. We, have to, we know the answer that Jesus gave Peter about the purpose of his pain. He says, when we are converted, are y'all listening to me? He gives Peter an answer to his pain. I want you to listen closely. He tells them, but thou art converted, stricken that brother. Now the word converted means to return and recover. In other words, Jesus tells Peter, after you get back on your feet, are y'all listening? After things get back to normal, when you get back on your feet, after you've been blessed in your life, go tell thy brother that God has done this for me. When you get out of your situation, your circumstances, when the Lord has restored you, the Bible says, go tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. I stop by to tell somebody, after God brings you through your situation, don't keep it to yourself. Go tell somebody that God brought me through, and if he brought me through, he'll bring you through. After God made 
place is stable, firm and established. Go tell somebody else about what God has done for you. I stop by to tell somebody this morning, don't let your situation get the best of you. You see, after your situation and your circumstances, after God bring you through, you'll be stronger than you ever been before. Because Peter couldn't help the brethren until the Lord helped him. I stop by to tell you, your circumstances, uh, your trials, uh, and everything you go through, it's just not for you. It's for the person next to you. It's for the person that you meet during the day. It's for the person on your job that somebody beside you uh, is going through something. And you need to tell somebody, I know God is able because he made a way for me one day. You see, Jesus, that when the situation of life knocks us off our feet, remember the Lord allowed us to get knocked down, that we may get up so we can help somebody. Everything we go through has a purpose behind it. And it's not always for us, but it might be for others. You see, if the Lord has been a way out of no way, if the Lord has been a leaning post for you, if the Lord has been a rock in a rear land and a shelter in the midst of a storm, you ought to give your neighbor a high five and tell them that the Lord is able this morning. I stop by as I go to my seat to tell you, don't let your situations get the best of you. When I think about how good God has been to me this morning, all I can tell you is thank you and tell the next person if he did it for me, he can do it for you. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done in my life, I can have this testimony and tell somebody, the Lord is able and don't let the, your situations get the best of you. When I think about the church, I stop by to tell somebody this morning, don't let your situations get the best of you. And the reason church why I'm not fighting uh, to victory. I'm fighting from victory. I want you to get this chest. This morning, uh, we, we, we are not fighting to victory. We, we, we are fighting from victory. I want you to get it, church. Uh, we, we are not fighting to victory. We are, we, we are fighting from victory. Uh, what, what it means this morning is that we are believing in victory. God has brought us through victory. He's brought us through one thing and he's brought us through one situation. So we are not fighting to victory. We are coming out of victory. And we know good God about it because he did it one time. Whatever the situation is, we've already been through victory. We know what victory smells like. We know what victory looks like. Therefore, we know that God is victory. And we know we have victory because we have faith in the Lord. The reason, church, we know we got victory is because we have the Lord on our side. The reason, church, we know that we have victory because my grandma was said, long as I got King Jesus, I got all I need. Because I got the one this morning, church, that died on Calvary's cross in a barley tomb. But the Bible said he didn't stay there. He got up there. One Sunday morning, with all power in his hand. So I stop by to tell somebody this morning, don't let your situation get the best of you. Because the Lord has all power in his hands. And because he has power in his hands, and you have power, and you have faith in the Lord, you can recover from your situations and your circumstances. Continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. And don't let your situations get the best I pray that you got of you. About the message this morning. Don't let your situation get the best of you. Jesus gave Peter a pep talk about Satan's agenda and what was coming his way. To forewarn him that situations come. Likewise, is it with us with our life that situations will come. But I, I encourage you this morning that have faith and don't let your situation get the best of you. 
And also, we'd like to invite you to Springfield Missionary Baptist Church, 68 Liberty Street in the city of Hawkeville, Georgia. Uh, we'll be getting our in-person service uh, the third Sunday uh, of May this month at 11 o'clock. If you've never been to Springfield, we invite you again. We're going to start our in-person service uh, 11 o'clock the third Sunday in the month of May. Pray for us. And we're going to practice social distance. We had, we're encouraging those to wear masks. Again, pray for us as we commence an uh, uh, in-person service uh, uh, on trial basis uh, third Sunday in May. Pray for us. Pray for us. Thank you.